So today I want to give you guys an update on all of the fish out here in the aquarium gallery. Uh, show you what everything's doing, how they are. But before we do that, I'm also going to, you know, bring you up to speed with how everything is actually going with, you know, this reconstruction process. Now I gotta say in advance, I know I sound a lot different right now. Uh, my daughter think it would be a fantastic idea to give me a cold at the beginning of the week. So um, for the, that's completely slowed things down and that's why I sound different. Not a big deal though, we do have a problem. And it's not even that big of a problem. First and foremost, the new racking system is now going to be individual racks. So tanks stacked on top of one of the other. I'll explain why here in a second. Uh, You'll notice that I painted the wall. A lot of people are like, Joey, you gotta paint that wall. I already had plans to do that. I was gonna paint it black because now I don't have to paint the tanks themselves because the back of the uh, walls are black and it blends in much better. The reason why I had to do these individual racks was very simple. It had a lot to do with the positioning of the power plugs. Now, in order to build these racks I, exactly as I wanted to, uh, I did have to move some of the plugs around and I decided that Instead of trying to level out a 23 foot long stand, uh, which was becoming more and more difficult over time, I decided I'm just gonna build th three individual racks, bolt them to the walls, and then we'll put the stands on top. I still have to put the plywood, and I still have to put, <clears throat> excuse me, the, uh, the, the, the sponge on top of it to absorb any irregularities in the stand, but it is looking really, really good. It's actually really dark, um, but once we have the lights on there, we're only gonna really, really able to see like the tanks, it's gonna look fantastic. Anyways, with redesigning the ideas for the racking systems, uh, I had to, um, I gotta get more wood. I simply ran out of wood. If I would've built this in one consecutive uh, stand, it would've been enough. Um, but because I wanted to chop it up into individual racks instead, I decided uh, it just simply takes up more materials. And then having to move the electrical around and whatnot, that kind of delayed everything. So I'm about a week behind, but I'll catch up over the next couple of days. I just, I'm starting to feel a little bit better, so we'll be fine. Now, we'll do an update on all of the fish. Oh, and before we move on to showing the fish and whatnot, uh, I just want to mention that I will be at Aquashella Dallas this year. It's October 30th, October 31st in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Love for you guys to come out, see my keynote speech. Um, it will be my last talk, my last presentation, but the last show that I actually go to. Um, and to give you context, over the years I've done over 100 shows that have uh, accumulated to you know well over 400 days. And um, that's 400 days away from my kids, 400 days away from my family. For, you know, it kind of adds up and I feel like I've, I've given enough. And um, you know, I, I just wanna, I need a break from it all in the last couple of years without being able to travel or at least the year um, has really opened my eyes and uh, I'm not gonna stop making videos. I'll keep doing this, but I want to get back to What I love doing and I'm not a huge fan of traveling. I have too much anxiety for that stuff So this will be my last show get tickets because I know it's gonna sell out uh, I'll see you guys there. So the first thing we're gonna notice with the stingray tank is the tank water is cloudy It just started happening in the last couple of days and that's probably largely because I haven't had the lights on um, lighting up the plants and their root systems are simply dying off and just, you know, kind of polluting the water a little bit. It's, it's technically pretty harmless and I can remove it all with a water change and get these guys under some lights properly, but I know it's going to be asked why is the water cloudy and it's simply because of the root systems. Um, but the rays are doing absolutely amazing. Without the Asian Air 1 in there, these guys have become like entirely different animals and species <laughs> that they were previously. Uh, it's back to being normal stingrays and the reason why I love them. They're so interactive. They recognize you. They'll come up and play on the glass and whatnot. Of course, I'm just hitting record now. But, you know, they'll swim in the waves. They, You know, it's back to not worrying about some massive fish coming up to bite them. And same with the bicer who's just kind of hiding over here right now. He'll come up and uh, eat freely now whenever there's... Uh, food in the tank he'll come up and just take a massive bite i'll do a feeding video here shortly i'm just kind of putting this out here because a lot of people are like worried and wondering where the fish are and how everybody's doing and you know because you know we've, we've been doing so much like construction type stuff that it's been a while since we kind of showed fish and whatnot so but the big female look how big she's getting now just absolutely enormous the air one itself love it He's doing great as well. Um, a lot of you sometimes ask, why is the water cloudy? It's not, it's the tank itself. So there's a little bit of algae on it that I've got. It's just general maintenance. Then you can see all the scratches. So that's what's making it look bad or, you know, foggy or whatever. So, I mean, I just clean the inside here when I get some time. I mean, I've been focused on everything else, right? Um, and so long as I feed the fish and do my water changes, you know, the, the minor cosmetic things to, you know, look good on the internet is the least of my concerns. But, uh, 
I'm just gonna get some wet dry sandpaper. Um, next time I do a big water change on the 2000 and I'll stand in here and I'll just buff off the front and I'll make it look brand new. The arowana will follow me, so watch. Obviously he's just sitting there, but if I come down here, wait. He'll come down. So this is the coolest thing to it because he no longer feels like uh, like a, just a fish, a pet fish. He's, it, it feels like this is his gallery and I'm the guest. It's such a weird feeling now, but it's, it's, it's also super, super cool. It's, it's so different, so awesome. I love him up there. I think, it's, I think it's great. And if I sit here, he'll come sit with me. And he just watches me. He's like the overseer of the entire gallery. And he'll literally just stay there. All right, so the 2000 itself, here, see, he's staying there. Uh, this tank is just absolutely insane. Absolutely. Ignore the, the tools and stuff, but um, you know, it's really hard to do all this construction stuff and keep busy and keep building and then, you know, keep the tanks looking good around them when you're, you know, working really hard. So there's a few things going on in this tank that uh, are pretty interesting. The discus, people ask about the discus. A lot of times they just stay back there. It's really different. Um, and, and then I'll hear somebody say, well, my discus don't hide that much. Well, your discus isn't in a 2000 gallon aquarium. So things, the fish are acting a little differently or a lot differently per se in a big aquarium. Now notice this, um, first and foremost, look at these severums. These guys here, just beautiful coloring up, just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I'd like to see the festivums grow a little bit faster, but they're clearly one of the slowest grow growers in this aquarium. Uh, with that said, the waru are being really, really weird. So come over here. Um, and by really weird, I mean they're over here breeding. Now, I don't know if you can see under the log, but uh, we've got a male and a female, and then we've got another subdominant male trying to get in on the action. And this goes on all day long. So look at her. See how she's vertical? I don't know if you can see it that well. I can't zoom in far enough. Um, see how she's vertical? She's fanning eggs over there. Will they do okay? Probably not. They've been doing this for two or three weeks now. Uh, I'm pretty sure the Corydora at nighttime go over there and have a smorgasbord of, uh, of uh, waru eggs. But I'm, just, I'm not removing them. I'm going to let this stay entirely natural. I've been documenting documenting it on a uh, on different cameras and whatnot but um uh, uh let's just see what happens over here the walru uh, still exists in the wild for a reason they're able to defend and protect their babies they could do it in here too i mean there's far more density oh no i got paint of course i did um but it's it just comes right off their finger not a big deal um and uh while we're on the topic i actually know why um the paint just comes right off your finger. That's been there. I mean, I painted these two days ago. I mean, the paint's been there and dried. It's cured uh, for two days. But I told you guys that I use this uh, Fritz glass and acrylic cleaner because I have a combination. That's acrylic and then I have glass tanks. I need something that'll let me go universally clean all of the tanks. But it also leaves, and I told you guys this before. This isn't like a sales pitch. I've told you before. It leaves like this film on it that protects it um, from dust and fingerprints. But because that film was on it, that's why that paint's just rubbing right off. Pretty cool, isn't it? Look at that. everybody in here is just doing so good. I love the uh, the war or the uh, severums because they all um, they all kind of look a little bit different. Yeah, this tank is always fun. So when I need a break, I just watch it. You know what I do? To be honest with you, I just watch one fish at a time. And you know, sometimes oh look, see this guy looks like this, and then we have another one right like there, all striped up. They all look kind of different. So it's almost like you can sort of kind of identify them separately. <coughs> Let me get a male female female big male super easy to uh, uh identify them sexually we uh we, we went over that in a past video but uh one of the things that i like to do is i'll just follow around a fish for like 20 minutes when i'm let's get out of this because of reflection yeah so for example i'll just watch this guy and i'll just watch what he does for 20 minutes just to see how he interacts with everything his environment what he's up to and you kind of learn each individual fish is very, very interesting. Now we could take a step back and look at everything as a whole and we could be like, wow, that's so beautiful and so interesting. But there's so many dynamics to an aquarium that you can really do. And I'd be interested to, to know how you guys actually look at your aquariums. I know obviously with your eyes or whatnot, and, um, but I mean, when it comes to staring at it, what do you look at? Do you go fish to fish? Or do you just watch one of them and see what happens? 
Oh, there's a discus. I went back. Whatever. Yeah, I love this tank. But I don't think this is going to be my favorite tank once we get the 180 set up. And I'll tell you, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the fish over here. So these guys are all in temporary setups, of course. Um, these are like holding tanks. Like, I've, I've read some comments like, oh, Joey, that looks horrible. This is like, they're just held in here until I can get the 180s up and running. Uh, archer fish are doing fantastic. They are eating in this tank. The filter's up and running. Um, I filled it up with even more uh, biological media, so it's just working fantastic. Uh, the Anubius all still alive. I don't know which tank that'll go in, but man, we got a lot of it attached to Lava Rock. So these are worth their weight in gold. I mean, Lava Rock, highly porous, is definitely a, a biological... Uh, has biological properties just simply due to its porosity and its surface area. And then of course the Anubius, even though they are a slow growing plant, they still are removing nutrients from the water. So I mean, putting one of these in an aquarium that's already saturated with bacteria is definitely going to be giving it a kickstart, but probably we'll put all of them in one tank. I don't know. Um, I do have a really cool plan for the archers. I think the scape might match their coloration. So black, silver, and white, um, but we'll see what goes on there. Oscar's doing fantastic, um, in my opinion. These guys will get a 180 as well, uh, as well as Tyrese, the, the Fajaka, freshwater Fajaka puffer. He'll be going in um, with the Oscars. And sail, same with uh, the Bicer from the uh, 700. So eventually that ray tank will just be stingrays. Uh, and then of course, the, t uh, the tank of death which uh, also known as uh, Kevin's Smorgasbord. You guys know he ate all the uh, the anemones previously. He did fine with them forever, and then just one day, he just started like eating them all, and he's very well fed. Like This is a big fish in person. He's like close to a foot long. Um, and then, of course, everybody else, the sailfin and some yellow tangs and uh, some bang guys and what else we got here? Fox face and clown triggers and some clown fish and so this tank here will eventually just be kevin's i or maybe he might move up here i don't know he's a very personable fish so he might like it up here more so he could see more uh, and then down here will just be salt water but we'll see what happens um those blocks there they're all cycled media and we'll do the same there you see in the in the filter in the background we'll just take that and put it up there Right now, all of that's fresh water, but that, all that fresh water media, I'll just take it and put it all down in that uh, filter that I built. Oh, and with the racking system, you know, kind of changing plans and whatnot, which had a, a lot to do with a number of factors, uh, I'm, I have to change the method of filtration that I was going to do. And I think you guys are going to like it even more because it's something that you'll be able to do for even the biggest aquariums that uh, you'll be able to build it within minutes. It's super... You're gonna like it, we'll get to it eventually. So this tank here right now, uh, in the 40 gallon rack system, this is empty. I think it's going to be an Episto tank, which we'll get to uh, the Episto's in the quarantine here shortly. And then the shell dwellers. We have a lot of these shell dwellers in another 40. Way too many, um, way too many shells right now. But what we're going to do is take half of this colony and half of it will stay here. The other half was gonna go into a 180 with the Frontosa, who are just kinda of hanging out here right now. Now, one of the things I was posting on Instagram is that it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how everybody does uh, when it comes to the shell dwellers. Will they do better in a 40 gallon alone? Does their, do they change their characteristics and how they act and how they breed? Or how do they act when there's actual natural predators in the tank? We already know what they're kind of like, but we've never had a direct comparison of two tanks. So it'll be fascinating because what I'll do is we're going to try the shell dwellers out with the Frontosa alone. And then uh, I'd like to add in a few more community style uh, Lake Tanganyika fish and have like a true um, Lake Tanganyika community, which is not something you see very often. It's usually species only tanks. Okay. And then of course, the apestos and whatnot, um, which are, this is the hardest tank to find anything in because this is all just moss on the ground. Oh, there's a couple, more than a couple. Yeah, so these guys are gonna move up into a tank up there. Oh, there's another one. 
They love this tank though. So I've been kind of prolonging it for a while and this is just like a quarantine tank, but they love it in here. Like this is, they love it. They're doing fantastic, they're growing, um, they're doing really well. So, you know, I'm almost not looking forward to moving them. But when I do, they'll go up into this tank. We're gonna have some Indian almond leaves. We're gonna make it like a black water tank uh, for those guys, powered by a simple sponge filter. Yeah, so that's it. I mean, I wish I was feeling a little bit better. It didn't sound like this. My, my brain's a little foggy right now. So I think I showed you everything that I want you to see right now. There's a couple other tanks that, uh, that I've, I have fish in it for a while that nobody knows about just yet. And I'm not sure how I want to show you that stuff, but it'll be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the gallery's coming along. Um, wondering what we'll do with the 180s. And here's the initial, you know, the initial thoughts. Oh, did I show you the piranha? See what I'm talking about? Ugh. They don't like being in this tank at all, but you'll be able to see some of them. Um, I think there's about 20 or 30 in there. They're getting big, but I gotta get them out of there shortly because I think they're like eating each other. Okay, now I think I showed you everything. I think, I mean, you guys will probably be like, what about this, what about that? Everybody's alive, everybody's fine. Um, I just can't remember if I've shown you something and we're in the same video. So initial plans for the racking system. So the 40s are gonna be really interesting because they're such small tanks. We'll keep them relatively relatable, but I might do some specialty type stuff. The 120s will be almost entirely <clears throat> empty once we move those. So in the 180s, let's we'll just start there. If I hit this tank and that's not what ends up in it, you get the idea. So we'll probably put like Oscars in one tank. Uh, so the, the group of Oscars with the buy shirt and the puffer fish all in one tank. And then this one, Piranha, I don't know the order, but we'll be doing a piranha tank. And in that piranha tank, I'm gonna also, you know, after a couple months, we'll grow them out a little bit more. Uh, and uh, probably add in some Tetras, probably like a, like a hundred, 200, uh, probably Neons. That's, they, they, they do really well with piranha. Uh, and if the piranha are big enough, they're not gonna view the Tetras as a, Food source, man, I look horrible. This is why I held off on making videos for a while because I can't think. Uh, and then we have the archer fish at the end, potentially, uh, and, and an Asian aquarium themed uh, tank. Who else? I'm thinking about bringing goldfish back. Um, I'm doing something like that. Okay. That's it for the update. I gotta get building these racks. Um, I gotta do something mindless. This is too hard on me right now and it's probably even harder on you trying to watch it. And anyways, thanks for joining me guys. Thanks for t uh, tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Wish me luck on, on recovering here. I mean, like, two more days and I'll probably be back to 100%, but I gotta go get more wood, ran out of wood, more paint, um, you know, actually clean up out here. Now I'm hungry. <sighs> I'll see you in the next video.